Hello friends, Harshal here and welcome to my YouTube channel that is Harshal's Cloud. In this video, we will create a very simple Jenkins pipeline and master slave configuration will be doing for EC2 instances. Also, a few more topics will be coming in this video. So stay tuned and let's get started. We will configure slave server as well as master server. We will install Jenkins on master servers and uh, we will add agent.jar file on slave server. We will establish the uh, we will establish the uh, communication between master and slave. We will do uh, the required uh, configuration on both the servers. So uh, let's go to uh, let's go to the AWS dashboard and we will uh, we will launch EC2 instances and we will configure. So here uh, here is the aws uh, aws dashboard and we are going to launch some uh, two instances one for master and one for slave so i write here two uh, because i want to launch two instances i don't give any name for now and here i have one uh, key pair that is demo one two three or i can uh, create new key pair so new care new key pair would be like um, rsa okay or we can say uh, master okay i uh, we can give any name to key pair name so that's fine okay it will be downloaded in the download directory so okay then uh, we need to add http we need to allow http traffic and okay we are good to launch the instances so two instances is launched now I'll check the instances now. So here I want to give the name. So this is the master server. I give name a uh, master server. And the another one is slave server. right so there are two servers one is masters and one is slave and we will uh, we will establish communication between uh, both uh, these two ec2 instances uh, okay so for now i need to do some configuration for master server i need to install jenkins on master server and uh, i need to install jenkins as well as java on master server and do some basic configuration on it so for that reason uh, i uh, let us say uh, that i don't know how to configure master server i don't know how to download and install jenkins on master server so in that case what we have to do we just need to check jenkins website and there and here if you go to the documentation in the tutorial uh, tab here you can go down and here you can see Jenkins on AWS okay uh, there are uh, there are so many steps so many information uh, you will be getting and just following and referring this information we can easily install Jenkins on EC2 instance so uh, okay I want this okay so uh, this information is uh, is important for me so I need to download and install Jenkins so what should I do I need to uh, I need to uh, I need to run these commands so here this is the master server I need to connect to it uh, via EC2 instance connect so I am connecting so now I can see the CLI of EC2 instance 
okay here is the cli and now uh, one by one i need to run uh, all the commands so i just need to copy and here paste again i need to copy it's very easy just we we just need to copy and paste this is copy and here paste again or uh, to import key file we need to uh, copy this command okay i copied the command and paste here then the next one is i need to upgrade all the packages on my machine so it started upgrading so every, all the package upgraded now um, i need to install java so here is you can see amazon linux extras uh, this is this is the package manager just like yum okay uh, for the linux uh, for the linux machine uh, we use yum package manager to install the packages but if you are using amazon linux in that case we can use amazon linux extras as well we can simply uh, download by using yum install java open jdk 11 or we can use amazon linux extras install java open jdk 11 okay both are correct so here it started uh, downloading the package now next I need to install uh, Jenkins okay uh, we need to wait for some time okay now Java is installed successfully so now we are going to install Jenkins it will again take some time and after installing Jenkins we need to uh, enable Jenkins service then start Jenkins service and after that we can check the status for Jenkins service so here I am enabling the Jenkins service then simply I need to start Jenkins service it will take some time and after that uh, we need to check the status for Jenkins service it is taking some time so I just pause this video for some time okay now Jenkins service has started and after that I need to check status so simply systemctl status and here we can see active and running it means that everything is uh, per everything is okay so Jenkins is uh, is uh, successfully installed on our EC2 instance now what we have to do uh, we have done our part okay uh, now we have to check whether Jenkins is actually running actually working on 8080 port or not so for that I have to here here is the instance ID this is uh, masters instance right master server instance ID so I simply copy public DNS here I HTTP this is public DNS then give the port that is 8080 right so we will check okay it will not work because we have not given 8080 port in the security group right so we have not allowed this port 
so uh, okay right now we have to go here in the security group where is security group so here is the security right so I just click here and this is the security group in the inbound rule I have to add 8080 port so this is the inbound rule I need to edit this here I can add the rule simply I have to add 8080 and uh, anywhere IP phone okay now it will be it has to be work yes okay uh, we can see the sign in page here and we have to uh, we have to pass uh, we have to add password here we need to uh, give password here so I don't know uh, what is the password so simply uh, copy this and sudo cat and the location okay here is the password and we can see password here so I copy this I paste it here and now we can see we are now into the Jenkins okay and uh, we have we have got two suggestions uh, the first one is we can install suggested plugins or uh, and uh, on other hand we can see select plugins to install we can select plugins by ourselves uh, or else we can uh, directly install all the suggested plugins as suggested here okay so I simply uh, go with this option for now I click on it it will started installing plugins soon so it is now started it will take some time so that all the suggested plugins will be installed uh, in the system so yes it is installing now okay now all the plugins have successfully installed uh, in EC2 instance now we have to uh, create first admin user so just give some name that is my username I'm giving here that is Herschel cloud then password one two three four Okay, so save and continue Herschel cloud and one two three four Herschel cloud is the username and one two three four is the person password now Jenkins URL uh, this is the Jenkins URL DNS name and the 8080 port now we are ready to uh, to start using Jenkins okay so this is the dashboard for Jenkins and we can now so this is our master server right so we have successfully installed Jenkins on master server uh, EC2 instance now what we have to do we have to uh, <coughs> we have to do some configuration now on our slave server so uh, here here are the instances so this is the slave server now and we don't need to add 8080 port here on the slave server because we are not going to install Jenkins on it so for that reason first of all I need to uh, connect to it so I'm taking SSH client right so this is master pim so master pim I need to first of all I need to uh, give a 400 permission right or uh, to the master.pim execute permission to master.pim file 
and I know where is the uh, master.pem file uh, it is downloaded in my download folder right so if I go and check so uh, where is master.pem so here you can see master and pem master.pem right so simply chmod giving uh, execute permission to master.pem okay now i have to uh, copy this ssh yes and i have successfully taken ssh for slave ec2 instance slave server right we are in our slave server so uh, we are good here now we can do the configuration on our slave server so there are some steps we need to perform here uh, we have launched the instance and now we have to uh, install java right for installing java uh, first of all we need to check we need to check the java version on our master server so uh, where is master server here is the master server and i have to check java server uh, java version okay java hyphen version so this is what i want so the java version is 11.0.13 right 11.0.13 that is the java version so the same version we have to be installed on our uh, on our uh, slave server so here i need to install amazon linux extras right then uh, i need to check the list here you can see uh, where is java so here is the java right this is the java package so i copy so these are the number of packages which is available on amazon linux so uh, it is showing the list for those packages okay now we have to install java package so i'm installing it right so it is uh, it is saying that you lack permission to write okay it means that uh, i have to give privilege pseudo privilege okay now it started uh, downloading and installing yes okay now we have successfully installed java on our system on uh, on slave server so if i want to check so this is version yes okay so the version is same 11.0.13 uh, this version is same to uh, the uh, master server so excellent now next one what we have to do uh, we have to manage nodes and okay we need to do configuration on master server now okay and we need to add uh, agent.jar file here on slave uh, but before that we have to go to our master server so here is the master server right uh, okay so here is the dashboard jenkins dashboard and now what we have to do we need to go manage jenkins we have to manage the node now we have to add the node so for that reason manage nodes and cloud okay here this is the built-in node built-in node means the master server okay here uh, it is calling here built-in node and we need to add one more node uh one more slave nodes right 
so this is the admin uh, this is the master server and the next node that we are going to add that will be a slave so new node right we have to add new node uh, give the name of the new node uh, we can give any name so uh, for now i am giving uh, java node right we can give any name so uh, i'm giving java node because uh, i just i just want that uh, building the java application will be uh, will be on the slave server right not on the master server it should be on slave server so that's uh, that's what i want so that's why i'm giving the node name that is java node okay uh, okay create so we have created and description to build java applications right uh, we have added uh, we have added this node this slave uh, to to do some uh, java related java related work to build some java applications right to uh, uh, to run some jobs related to java okay the number of executors number of executors means uh, how many jobs will be performed concurrently so the number of jobs we can add here uh, i am going to add 3 okay so concurrently it will uh, it will run three jobs now root directory this root directory is very important let us say you can specify any of any directory as a root directory right it is up to you let us say i am adding home right and i am giving here name that is uh, java it means that in home there is java directory will be created okay java directory is not available for now in home directory but here i written java it means that in home java directory will be created automatically okay because that is the remote root directory this is the remote root directory and the workspace will be uh, will be added here right uh, this uh, this will give you a workspace here we can add label java jobs okay then uses uh, you can use this mode as much as possible that is okay for now then launch agent by connecting to uh, the controller via ssh execution mode for controller so for now launch agent by connecting to it uh, to the control that is fine okay here we can disable uh, if you uh, if you don't know then we can simply click on it and here you will get some information about this right so i am just uh, selecting uh, options because there is so so much uh, uh, there is so much information to explain uh, uh, explain this topic so that's why i'm not explaining that much because i want to keep it simple here we can disable work directory work dir it means that if we disable work dir uh, it means that the log files will not be generating it will not be saved or stored okay so i just want that the log files uh, should be stored in my system so that's why i unchecked it okay then custom dir dir path you don't need to uh, give path here if you want to give path here you can but if you don't give the path that is also okay that is also fine because eventually it will directly uh, take the same path as of uh, root remote root directory then internal data directory this is uh, remote thing that is okay we are using here websocket then uh, that is okay and save now so java node is now we have uh, added so i just click on 
that java node and here you can see agent.jar file okay so uh, we have to we need to check the ip address on both here is the ip address 392203190 392203190 both are uh, both are matched so we are going to uh, download agent.jar and this file uh, we have to uh, put it in home directory because uh, my root directory is my root directory is home java right so i just click on it it is now downloading right this is agent 1 okay right so it is downloaded in the download folder so i know very well so for now i am exiting it okay it is already exited clear right so i need to um, copy uh, for copying uh, for copying any file to the remote host we are using here our scp we can use scp or rsync but here i am using scp uh, for copying file on remote location then hyphen i okay and master dot pem file uh, is the is is used for the authentication here so for that reason i am uh, i'm selecting this okay then agent so here uh, Uh, okay okay what I need to do I need to simply uh, first of all I need to uh, remove this agent.jar file both agent.jar file uh, because it will create a trouble now remove agent dot jar file so it is created okay now again I want to check if there is any agent dot jar so now there is nothing okay so again I go here I download agent dot jar file now it is downloaded so I'm using SCP I then the password that is master dot pm file is used for the authentication then uh, okay agent.jar file and now the remote location uh, credential I have to add there so uh, I need to add uh, ec2 hyphen user this is the username and then the IP address of uh, of the machine So now IP address of the machine is required. So that IP address should be public IP address. So where is public IP address? So if I go to the instance, right? Uh, okay, this is the instances. I want to uh, this slave. Slave IP address is needed because I want to uh, copy that agent file in slave so here is the public IP address paste here then I need to give the location where should I uh, paste so here is the home it's hanged okay now it's working so again public IP address now paste then home
why it's not working okay now i am entering here Okay, permission denied home agent dot jar. permission denied there is something wrong happen Okay, it started. Uh, it started copying on EC2. Uh, this EC2 instance, but it is taking uh, too much time. I don't know whether it is due to uh, that connectivity is not working properly. That's why. Okay, let me. Uh, pause this video for some time okay guys so now it is successfully uh, copied to ec2 uh, user right so i don't know whether it is uh, copied now because okay let me check So if I do ls, so yes, here is the agent dot jar, okay. And uh, if I do pwd, then yes, it is in uh, EC2 user, right? So I just need to. Uh, copy agent dot jar to home right permission denied why it is show why it is saying that sub permission denied I have no idea sudo right so uh, now we have to check cd home so now there is agent dot jar okay it is in home directory now so it took a lot of time okay so many issues we uh, we encountered with but eventually we have successfully uh, copied agent dot jar in uh, home directory okay okay so we have done so far uh, so good 
now what we have to do oh uh, we have done it okay in the slave now we execute new okay so here uh, in Jenkins uh, you can see this command right so there is a work directory that is Java uh, home and Java okay in uh, it is the directory home is the directory where we have put agent dot jar file okay which is required so now this should be work uh, this uh, this command will be running on it successfully so I pasted it so it should be run now thread java sudo hyphen i best and let me do this okay so now you can see that it is connected right so it means that now both uh, the master server and the uh, slave server both are connected to each other okay so that's why it is showing here connected and here if we go here right uh, we go to node okay now you can see it is connected okay if I click on it Java node then here you can easily uh, understood by reading this that agent is connected now so we have uh, we have actually uh, connected both master server and the uh, slave server so we are good here and okay so i'm just cancelling it uh, because it is on foreground okay i want to run i want to run this agent on on the background so for that reason what i have to do i just need to give a space and and okay and it will be it will be connected and it will be running in the background okay and this is the background id Control C. Oh, oh, again I am doing this. Did control. Okay. okay so it is showing connected now and if I do refresh yes it is connected okay now what we have to do we need to uh, create a simple uh, create a, a simple project okay for that I am going to uh, dashboard and here a new item click on new item here I'm, I just want to select, to do a simple project that is hello it's a freestyle project and here here you can see restrict where this project can be run okay I just wanted to restrict where this project can be run it it can be run on my uh, on my slave server right so what is the name of the uh, project okay name of uh, name of the node I have to add here so I have given some Java name okay here you can see it is reflected so Java jobs right so there is some okay here you can see label Java jobs matches one node it means that it has picked up the slave node the slave server uh, where this project will be run right then I'm not using any source code management source code or build environment so simply I just want to build something that is execute some shell right so I'm executing like echo hello world okay so 
I just want to do some simple, very simple uh, project. And the project hello is now created, and I have to do building now this project. So it started building. Right here, you can see it is completed. Just click on it, and you can see the console output here. Okay. Uh, the started by Herschel running as a system. Uh, this is remotely by Java jobs, right? Java node node name is Java node and the label is Java job. Okay. It is working on where it is working. It is working on workspace and our workspace is this right in home directory where I had put agent.jar file. Okay. Uh, there Java you can see and there uh, there is the workspace and uh, whatever the project we will create and we want to restrict it to restrict these projects to uh, to the uh, slave server then this is the workplace this will be the workplace and all the projects will be added here right so uh, here is the hello world this will be uh, this uh, this will be uh, seen as a hello world like this and it is finished success so if I go here and if I check actually it is it has run or not okay so you can see that Java folder uh, created okay then CD Java CD Java then if I do LS so here is the workspace now CD workplace workspace so here is the hello CD hello what is there so there is nothing okay so this is the hello world <coughs> it is created now okay so this is the simple step okay and now you understood that uh, what is the use of a uh, slave uh, what is the use of slave server and why is it useful uh, why slave servers are connected how slave servers connected to the master server right so uh, because so many uh, so many uh, so many projects will be run so many jobs uh, will be running on master server so for that reason uh, there are so many slaves needs to be established a communication establish uh, establish a communication with the uh, master server and it will give some jobs uh, we can run some jobs on slave server rather than running the jobs on master server so that is the benefit uh, benefit of uh, of uh, communication uh, uh, for established communication between master and slave servers <coughs> so now we are going to our dashboard and here now the next topic is how can we create uh, how can we create Jenkins uh, Jenkins pipeline right so here uh, here you can see the new item right and here we can see the pipeline we can uh, we can create a pipeline but before that before creating the pipeline uh, what we have to do we simply need to uh, go to manage Jenkins and manage plugins okay because uh, we have to add uh, go to available click on uh, available and here you need to add pipeline okay this plugin is important right so this pipeline plugin is important and okay pipeline docker pipeline okay so so many options you uh, you will be seen so this option okay pipeline deck uh, deprecated uh, groovy libraries okay so we need to install uh, 
the download now and install after restart okay you can do this one also both are fine so all the process successful this two is not successful it this will be activated during the next boot it means that we need to do restart Jenkins so now Jenkins is restarting and the plugins will be uh, successfully installed after this restart so it will take some time okay now you can see uh, uh, we can see that login page here uh, my username is Herschel cloud and the password is one two three four So I logged in okay and now I have to uh, do new item this is Java jobs uh, no it's a uh, hello world right I will uh, create hello world very simple uh, simple pipeline okay uh, I will create one application for hello world simple code so I'll go with the pipeline okay so the pipeline will be created right so here if I go down here you can see the pipeline option now okay and uh, uh, we can uh, we can import script from SCM it means that uh, we can import script from github from uh, from directory okay from history bucket uh, but for now uh, i don't want to i don't want to import uh, script uh, from from any bucket uh, from git so i'm simply uh, try some simple uh, sample pipeline that is hello world okay this is uh, this is the script now you can see this is the script right so this is the pipeline it means that this is a declarative script and one more script that is uh, okay if I go here I can okay this is declarative pipeline and scripted pipeline okay there are two types of syntax we can see okay so this syntax is a declarative pipeline okay and if you want here is the pipeline syntax if I click on it okay there generate advance okay for now okay so this is uh, this is declarative pi uh, pipeline and there is one more pipeline that is scripted pipeline here it starts with the pipeline uh, in that there is a agent any it means that it will run on any agent okay and in that agent there is stages okay uh, we uh, in the stages there is hello stage we uh, they have given the name hello we can given any name that is we can give the name deploy we can give the name build stage deploy stage whatever okay we can give any name okay but here in the hello world sample uh, uh, sample pipeline they have given the stage name that is hello and in in the stage there is a steps okay and here we can uh, we can run any command so here uh, they are running echo hello world okay so this is the script this is uh, uh, this is the uh, declarative pipeline okay so I just here uh, we just need to apply and we just need to save okay and now you can see so where is hello world okay so we need to build now right so after building yes it started building and now you can see the stage view right 
so if I click here on the logs here you can see the log right so print message hello world and this is the hello world also uh, if you click on it and here uh, there is a console output you can see uh, it is finished with success so this is the very simple uh, pipeline we can uh, uh, we can uh, create right so uh, okay I'm going here on the Jenkins and in Jenkins uh, you can here in the tutorials there is uh, okay Jenkins pipeline right so here in the pipeline option you can see the declarative pipeline and scripted pipeline if you want to check uh, look here uh, they have given one uh, a publishing HTML reports in pipeline okay they have created a pipeline uh, they have given both the option that is declarative pipeline and scripted pipeline you can see both both of them right so I just click on it on declarative pipeline and here uh, you can see the block okay uh, how they have set how they have set uh, this uh, uh, this project uh, for publishing HTML report uh, they have done it uh, in the Jenkins uh, you can simply uh, you can simply go and check this blog and here for converting declarative right so here is the declarative it starts with a, a pipeline agent is any it means it will run on any agent then options then stages in stage there is a build stage right then steps steps means uh, we can uh, run any command right there is a, a different command there is a command okay then after that uh, there is some publish HTML target they have done some uh, publishing uh, publishing code right so this is uh, so it starts with pipeline right so this is called declarative pipeline and if I if I'm going back and I'm click on scripted pipeline here you can see it starts with here is some different script right it has some uh, it is different from declarative it starts with the node right and there is uh, there is different options okay so just go and check uh, this declarative and uh, and script scripting pipeline and you will come to know a lot more right okay so uh, now okay now I would like to tell you about users if you go here in the manage Jenkins in the manage Jenkins you can see uh, that you know very well that uh, manage plugins we can install uh, plugins here by using this then uh, you can see that manage nodes and cloud we can add nodes here and here you can see manage users if you want to uh, create number of users right if you want to create number of users how can you create it how can you modify it so simply go here in the manage users click on it and here uh, you can there is already one user ID that is Herschel cloud right so I am the admin okay so I just want to create a new user right so let us say I want to create Homer username is Homer password is 1234 confirm password 1234 then full name is Homer Simpson right homer at example dot com so I create this user okay uh, this user has been created now okay in the same way I have to create one more user that is Marge Simpson that is March give password 
okay full name is marjorie simpson right then the third one is Now the last one is Bart. Okay, so I have created four users, right? Bart, Homer, Lisa, and Marge. So now, uh, if I log out and I try with, uh, I try with Homer, right? So let me check with Homer. So I log out, and the username is Homer, and password is I'm putting in. So now i can easily log in okay and i can do whatever i want okay so every user have access uh, to login in uh, in the account uh, but i don't want to give the authorization to every user in that case what we have to do we have to add role based authorization so how can we uh, how can we configure role based authorization for that the reason uh, we are we need to go to uh, manage Jenkins here uh, we can uh, manage plugins we need to add a role based plugin so role here in available if I write role so here you can see role based authorization strategy so I click here and install without uh, restart that is fine okay so okay now it is successful just click on it it will uh, restart Jenkins is restarting So it will take some time to restart the Jenkins. Okay, now uh, we are on uh, login page. So I'm login with my credential that is Herschel Cloud. Here if I go to people they can give all the names right Marge, Bart, Lisa, Homer, Herschel Cloud and uh, okay I want to uh, I want to enable that role based authorization so for that reason I need to go uh, manage Jenkins and here is the uh, you can see configure global security just click on it if I'm clicking on configure global security uh, so many options I will get okay uh, here the authentication so authentication should be enabled all the time so I will not uh, I will not do anything here now next security real okay so uh, for now Jenkins own user database so it is working on it on uh, owns user database so not to worry okay here is the authorization in the authorization 
logged in users can do anything okay uh, that is that is what i don't want right so i just go with the role based strategy so i just click on it okay so and here if you go down okay everything is perfect okay so apply this and save it okay so now nobody uh, will log in into this uh, kenkins okay so for that reason uh, let me log out and let me try with the homer if i try with homer so homer will not get access right because it uh, it do not have access uh, because the role based uh, authorization is not active for homer it is only active for it is only active for herschel cloud that is me that is admin okay so again i am going to log log out and i log in with my user name herschel cloud and password so see i can easily log in now right okay uh, that is the case okay and again we will go there in the security option here in configure global security we can uh, uh we can give the authori authorization strategy as per the project base right right uh let us say there are some authenticated user or we can add user as well uh, like uh, i want to add homer here right so oh, homer simpson is added then i want to add lisa now lisa is also added here so for overall uh, we can give read access create access delete credential for credential we can give uh manage credential delete okay for agent we can give access we can give access to the job okay let us say uh, we have given access for building to to homer simpson right then we can give access to uh, build cancel create uh, delete discover move read okay so what whatever the uh, Uh, whatever the requirement of the user and the requirement of the project we will give uh, we will give the privileges and the permission to the user okay accordingly so that is what we can do uh, we can also apply here and we can save right and the same permission will be uh, provided to the user also we can create the group right so we have not yet created the group so we can create and add group here uh, simply giving uh, permission to the individual rather than giving permission to any individual we can give permission to a group and we can add multiple individuals in that group right so uh, how can we do that uh, let let we check so where is uh, for that reason we need to go manage jenkins and here uh, here manage and assign role right so if you click on it here you can manage the roles how can you manage the role here you can uh, manage here you can give a uh, uh, permission to the global roles right so these are the roles you can add uh, you can add role to add okay so let us say the role is developer is the role right then employee is the role then tester is the role so let me give developer okay i'm adding this role if someone is tester then i add this role that tester okay so this is right and we can now uh, simply apply and we can save so now we can assign roles we can assign roles to individual right so uh, 
here is developer admin and tester Herschel is the admin right because it is checked and Herschel is the admin he is uh, administrating uh, the website the uh, this whole Jenkins process right so there is uh, there is uh, anonymous okay I want to give uh, I need to add Homer Homer uh, I want to give the role developer role to Homer right then I have to give Marge Marge is also a developer then Bart I'm adding Bart as a uh, tester and Lisa as a tester okay in this way uh, we can assign roles we can assign roles to the individuals to the employees right and uh, okay we can apply and save also here so uh, again I click on it and here is the role strategy uh, macros okay okay so I have uh, I have give you the uh, complete overview of Jenkins here in this video uh, I can't I cannot go uh, deep down in the Jenkins topic because uh, it has a lot of topic lot of stuffs in Jenkins so that's why I uh, I just want to keep it simple and uh, and so that everybody can easily understood uh, the basic uh, the basic concept of Jenkins so guys I hope that uh, you understand today's video you understand today's topic very well so uh, thank you so much guys for watching my video have a good day bye